Hey, buddy, watch this. Hello, hello, Regis Kilman is the name, and Heroes of the Storm is the game, and this is my first look at the brand new hero, Ariel. This is the latest support hero to be added to Heroes of the Storm. I've yet to play one second of her, but I'd like to take a look at her basic abilities, run through her talents, and theorycraft a little bit about how Ariel will play in a, a competitive environment. So... Uh, first things first, let's go ahead and just marvel at how cool Ariel looks right off the bat, right? Uh, she's super awesome, fitting that uh, Archangel theme material quite nicely floating around. Looks really cool. Uh, now let's talk about her health and her, her mana resource, if you will. So health pool is pretty solid for a support. Not a huge number, but uh, more than enough to work with. She's not a squishy despite her frail frame, right? She's uh, actually sort of tough. And then there is her mana pool, which you'll note says 0 out of 1108. And this is not actually mana at all. It's called energy, stored energy. And if we read Ariel's trait, uh, bestow hope, I think we'll see exactly what the stored energy means, right? Uh, this is a passive 40% of the damage you deal to heroes. And 8% dealt to non-heroes is stored as energy. Uh, bestow an allied hero with hope. While they remain near you, damage they deal causes you to gain energy as well. And you can only target one person with this bestow hope ability at all. So, essentially, you have to do damage or you have to have a buddy in the buddy system here called bestow hope doing damage in order to generate mana. So we can probably see this. Uh, right now we have zero. We'll start hitting this target dummy, and you'll see our energy here at a 40% rate of 105, so like, you know, 42 damage or so. It's jumping up. Uh, it's actually jumping up about 42 to 43 alternating. And uh, before too long, we have enough, um, enough energy to do stuff. But that said, uh, what exactly is our energy used for? I guess just our ray of heaven. Consume your stored energy and heal ally heroes in the area for the amount of energy consumed. Uh, so we have 1,000 energy right now. We're going to take some damage and uh, let's try to heal ourselves. So we heal for 161 and spent our entire energy pool. So does this actually. So Q does not rely on energy and neither does. Detainment strike. So your damage abilities uh, are just resource free, so you can always cast them regardless of the amount of uh, of energy that you have. Yeah, you can cast them on zero. Uh, but your W uses your entire energy pool to heal. So that's an interesting, uh, interesting kind of caveat to this, right? Like, yeah, you want to have max energy. But there may be times where you don't actually need to heal for the full 1,000 health. So there's going to be a sort of resource balance management in mind with the four second cooldown here of Ray of Heaven. In other words, there might be times you'd rather cast this with 400 energy to top somebody off and then essentially cast it sooner than you otherwise would and then do additional damage to get more energy for the next big heal. So it's going to be a sort of balancing act there. Um, always healing enough and saving because you can't save energy right you spend it all as soon as you heal so you kind of have to know when to heal and time it and think about how to get more energy in the near future so you have to think am i going to have enough right now am i going to have enough am i going to have enough heal now am i going to have enough energy later and uh that sounds like a kind of tough uh managing act there a balancing act of getting all the numbers right uh, i think for the most part you'll just be able to spam damage and cast heals as needed but there will be instances where you have to think a little more critically about how to use that because uh, a four second cooldown is is short very short in fact for a heal but it's not instant so you can't just cast it all the time there's going to be a four second delay sometimes uh, i don't have answers to exactly how to think about that just yet but that is definitely going to require some juggling and um, some foresight in order to heal adequately, I think, with Oriel. So, um, anything else to talk about here with Bestow Hope, your trait? Uh, it does look like doing damage to heroes. It builds it much faster. Uh, minions and Mercenaries at an 8% rate is not very exciting. 
it will take a while to uh well actually you can get quite a bit just from your uh just from your w or your q excuse me hitting very hard uh it's a pretty solid wave for their talent particularly if you catch all the minions in the middle so uh there will actually be some instances uh where you can farm up energy off minions and that's nice like it's not just a team fight mechanic okay cool so yeah, uh, good energy. Doesn't seem hard to get, I guess I'll say, right? Like, especially when you have it flying on a teammate too. Uh, so I, I think you're gonna be able to spam stuff pretty well. And uh, that's not a damage ability. You should not cast your uh, W on, uh, on enemies. So it doesn't decay, it doesn't regain for free. You have to do the damage. It, it's an interesting new uh, resource mechanic, that's for sure. It actually kind of reminds me of something like Rage in Warcraft, right? We have to do damage to build it. Um, pretty neat. So let's go ahead and talk about the rest of her abilities. Uh, up first is her Q, Sacred Sweep. Uh, sweep the area with Sacred Power, dealing 175 damage to enemies and an additional 351 to, to uh, enemies caught in the center. So I think that means that the center people actually get hit for 526? If I did the math right, is that correct? We can uh, we can check that, I guess, on the dummy. Let's get hit for 526. Uh, it said 351. So I don't think it's additional. I didn't see a second number pop up for the dummy. Um, oh, it did, 175 and 351. So yeah, that hits really hard in the middle. That's not bad at all. Uh, and you know, even the sides aren't nothing at uh, 175 for support. That's a uh, halfway decent uh, offensive ability. I kind of like it. And it's great for wave clear because you can basically line up the minions in that cent center cone and hit every minion as long as you catch them early enough uh, with the... Yeah. It doesn't outright kill a wave, but it does chunk them quite a bit. Uh, for support, it's really not bad. Comes up fast enough, too, at 8 seconds that you saw we casted it twice. Even with someone in lane, we had a 4 minion advantage there wasn't even optimized so yeah not a bad wave clear tool seems to hit heroes relatively hard as well it takes up a huge area so uh, you'll be able to use it pretty often and you'll have to to build energy so then her w ray of heaven has a four second cooldown we already looked at this one a little bit it's got a uh, solid size here not like the biggest size ever but you should be able to hit two to three people pretty consistently with this remember you only have to hit the edge of their circle so uh, it's really almost another full um, full body and uh, radius for here, really. But uh, not the you just you know it's it's it is targeted though, so you don't even have to be near. You can cast it far away, unlike somebody like Charism, who becomes the center of the circle, right? So that's a pretty nice upside. Um, and you know, a, a thousand or I guess an eleven hundred point heal at level 20 to multiple people is pretty big, particularly on a four second cooldown if you can build energy fast enough, which is gonna be very hard to see in this setting, I will admit. Um, but it seems like it's not gonna be that hard to build, you know, at least six, seven, eight hundred energy in between cooldowns. I mean, even by yourself, right, like just auto attacking, we had 250. Uh, and if you throw in a Q that hits, you know, you can get to like 350, 400. And that doesn't count your D also being on uh, an allied hero. So that's, you know, theoretically going to um, double it, I guess. I don't, I don't really know for sure, but it's going to make it go faster. So it feels like you're just going to spam this thing for huge heals over and over again, which seems a little bit overpowered in my mind. <laughs> but uh, it, it is something you have to hit, right? It's a skill shot, and people don't always line up or stand together, so... Uh, there are some complications to its use. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the E, Detainment Strike. 14 second cooldown on this one. Deal 219 damage to the first enemy hero hit and knock them back. They collide with terrain. They are also stunned for 1.25 seconds and take an additional 219 damage. So the damage here is, you know, 440 almost if uh, both hit. That's not bad. Uh, but it's really the crowd control that you care about, right? It's going to lock them down, and that's... That is a full stun effect, it's not just a root, which is an important distinction, so stuns are very powerful, and that's a pretty long stun these days as well. 
So if they're near terrain and you're able to push them into that terrain, uh, that's going to be a very powerful play. But frankly, uh, even if they're not, just the knockback effect, it only works on heroes, so that's good to note. Even the knockback effect is powerful, right? So if you're fleeing and you need to knock somebody off, buy some time, you can do that. You can also zone for a teammate, essentially. Uh, just annoy opponents. And a 14 second cooldown is not that long, so you can actually... Uh, use it uh, pretty regularly, multiple times at a given fight, likely, which is cool. Yeah, it's, it's really fun to see. Uh, I, I like it a lot. Seems like a very strong ability. Crowd control is important. Not all supports have crowd control, but this is, you know, there are a lot of places where you will be able to hit people into terrain. And again, even if you don't, it's just important to move people around and, and do a little bit of damage, right? It's kind of a poke tool. <laughs> Thank God that's a cooldown, that poor Arthas. Uh, this poor bot art this is getting wrecked by my knockback. He's uh, he's gonna be frustrated. Looks very cool animation wise too. Like it's whipping out the uh, the little lash there. So that's another cool ability. Uh, I like all three of her abilities. Seem to have uh, solid damage for support. High utility. Uh, pretty cool little kit she's got here. So that said, now that we've looked at uh, resource management or trait her abilities, I guess let's go ahead and jump into the talents and see how the talents look. Uh, first, level one is Swift Sweep. Increases the cast speed of Sacred Sweep by 50%. So that, here's the, uh, let's get a look at the speed here. You know, not super slow. I didn't feel like it was slow uh, from, from running it, but let's see what it looks like now. It feels substantially faster. For some reason, the sound effect goes away as well. Uh, which is sad, but <laughs> that might be an oversight. I don't think that's intentional. What a cool animation, by the way. You can really see a lot of cool effects in this, like a really great particle effects. Uh, so that seems okay. I mean, it's going to make it more likely to hit people in the center. But uh, I, I don't think it's insanely good or anything. Uh, there's also increasing clarity. Every time Sacred Sweep hits a hero in the center, increase the center damage by 3, up to 60. After hitting 20 heroes... The center damage bonus is doubled to 120. So, okay, an extra 120 damage in the mid to late game. Uh, not bad. Every 8 seconds, it's not a ton of DPS. But remember, it's not just DPS with Oriole. That's also healing. Uh, when you do more damage, you do more healing. So, 120 increase in um, damage translates to 40% of that, which is, what, a uh, 45, 40, probably like a 47 somewhere around there uh less than 50 i guess but no actually 48 or 49 uh bonus to your heal as well because it's just going to give you extra energy so a little bit of double duty right extra damage extra heal not bad i mean it, the numbers aren't huge but uh it does feel like it would add up right over the course of the game it's uh, certainly not bad to have extra on both of those attributes uh, but there's also Righteous Assault. Reduce the cooldown of Sacred Sweep by two seconds for each enemy hero hit, up to a total of four seconds. So that's pretty crazy, because I feel like it's going to be able to hit multiple people relatively often, just because the, the swath here is so wide. Hitting two people is going to reduce the cooldown by four seconds, so you're going to spam it uh, every four seconds instead of every eight. Now that's basically doubling its effect, right? If you cut the cooldown in half, you're practically doubling the damage, doubling the heat, the energy, which doubles the heal. So it seems way more impactful than this, which is, you know, 120 is uh, an increase of like a third on 351. So this is like a 33% increase, and it's only if you hit in the center. This theoretically... Although this is also an increase on minions, I should say. This also works on uh, wave... No, it says every time it hits a center. A hero in the center. So this is also just heroes. So this seems objectively worse than this to me. As long as you know you're going to be able to use the ability twice. Uh, even if you hit one person, it's the same. Because uh, it's a little worse. You're cutting it by 25% if you reduce the cooldown by 2 seconds. You're cutting the cooldown by 50%. If you uh, hit two people and you cut it to four seconds, this is a 33% increase roughly, but it takes a while to build up. So this one is better a lot of the time right away. I feel like Righteous Assault is just better than increasing clarity. 
I like this talent a lot, frankly, because more spells that are totally free to cast and increase your healing output and increase your damage output sounds insane. Uh, less burst damage, I guess, technically more sustain compared to this one, but uh, still, I think I like this. There's also Searing Light. Uh, Ray of Heaven also deals damage to enemies in the area equal to 30% of the uh, energy consumed. All right, so that's cool. So if you got like two melees hitting on each other and you want to heal your tank and there happens to be an enemy in the circle, you're going to hit them uh, for, you know, 330 damage or so. That's not bad. It's, again, on a four-second spam. So you could also just use this as a targeted spell sometimes if nobody needs healing. It's a little risky because you're using all your mana to do it, but uh, all your energy, excuse me, to do it. That's pretty cool, too. I mean, both of these feel... Like the stronger choices, um, I guess the damage you do with Ray of Heaven actually gets returned. Well, we gotta actually test this, right? Does it get returned as energy again? It does. I instantly got energy back. No, I didn't. Let's see. Oh yeah, we did. It's just getting we're getting diminishing returns. Yeah, we got three out of twenty-one refunded. Because we did three extra damage. So yeah, that's actually kind of cool, right? This is a 30% uh, refund, basically, on your mana. Uh, that's not bad. That's pretty good. So these kind of all do the same kinds of things, just with different numbers. I like it. They operate in very different ways. But they all basically give you an increase to your damage and healing through energy generation. So they all actually do the same thing. Just the numbers are shifted around. I, I don't know. I think Righteous Assault might still be the best. Just because your Q feels like a really strong ability. But it, it's a toss up right now for me. Let's go ahead and move on to level 4. There is Majestic Span. Increase the radius of Sacred Sweep by 20%. Uh, okay. So let's talk about cooldowns. Here's the radius right now. Let's see if we can't measure this. Uh, let's travel about right here. A little bit forward. Okay, so now we're basically to the end of that stone circle. Let's go ahead and grab the talent. And now, you know, it's like one extra body length away. So, you know, pretty substantial, honestly, because you got to consider the entire circle, right? Uh, not a bad gain at all. It certainly allows you to poke from even farther away, which is nice, because it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's now probably outside of tower range. Nope, just inside of tower range now. Oh no, you can... No, it's just inside of tower range, but still really good, and it's long range, so... Not bad, there's also Heavy Burden. When an enemy hero is stunned by Detainment Strike, their movement speed is slowed by 35% for 3 seconds after the stun. Uh, that feels like a win more talent a little bit to me, right? If you've already stunned them for that long... There's a good chance your team has killed them or you've made the impact that you want. And 35%, although nothing to scoff at, is not like the biggest, uh, most punishing slow ever. So I don't think it's really going to add much other than just being sort of annoyance. Uh, plus, I mean, most of the time you're going to be hitting them into terrain. It's probably going to be closer quarters, right? Because the range on this is not crazy long or anything. So, you know, if you're hitting them into corners, I guess... You could actually be over here and still hit them into the corner, right? There's some travel time after the the contact is made. So I was going to say, you know, if you're that close quarters, the stun may not make that big of an impact anyway. Uh, but, you know, you could be sort of far away. Still, I, I just don't think 35% is enough. And uh, if you're landing the stun, and this is only when they're detained, it says. Um, so only when they're stunned, that is. So it, it's only helpful when you're already doing good. And sometimes that's unnecessary. Uh, there's also repeated offense. Every time detainment strike stuns a hero, increase the stun damage by 10, up to 100. After stunning 10 heroes, increase the damage by an additional 100. So that's a 200 damage increase in total. You know, it adds basically 33% or so to the talent's strength because it does 400 right now if they're stunned. Uh, I, I don't think that's enough to matter. I actually think this is probably worse than Heavy Burden. I don't think you have to do damage. I understand it increases your healing technically a little bit, but 
It's going to take a while for that to hit. You know, 10 stuns might actually be sort of challenging just because people aren't always standing next to terrain. And uh, even if you get them all, if you finish the quest, it doesn't seem that good. So I actually think I like Majestic Span here. I think even though it may not seem like that big of an impact. I don't know. Extra range on this doesn't hurt. You can just hit so much stuff right now. It's crazy. I mean, it looks really good to me. Like, her Q feels like it's going to be quite strong. Because it's driving her healing, remember? This is her primary damage ability, so... Every little extra hit you get with this also makes your healing better. Feels good to me. Uh, moving on to level 7. Up first is Bursting Light. Reduces the cooldown of Prey of Heaven by 2 seconds. So you get to spam this every 2 seconds? That actually seems kind of ridiculously good. If you're pumping out enough damage, god, you're just going to be spamming abilities constantly. You get the cooldown reduction here. Cooldown reduction here. You're just going to be queuing and Wing constantly, right? It won't look quite this fast, but it's going to be fast. <laughs> uh, that seems that seems ridiculously good. Uh, I know it's probably not going to be an 1100 point heal every two seconds, but you know, even if it's a 500 point heal every two seconds, with no limitations on your ability to sustain, as long as you're doing damage, you're also healing. Seems kind of overpowered. Uh, but let's look at everything else. There's also Glimmer of Hope. Uh, collecting a Regeneration Globe reduces the cost of your next Ray of Heaven by 35%. Uh, so basically this just leaves you a little bonus energy, I guess, after casting, after you've picked up a globe. I don't really like this that much. Um, globes aren't that common. I mean... Especially in like late game team fights where you really care about the heals the most. There aren't just always globes laying around, so this may not impact you all that often. I just don't feel like it's gonna add up enough. No, it's I think it's basically trying to make globes worthwhile to Ariel, because right now they're not gonna give her mana, just health. So they might seem a little underwhelming. But uh, I don't want to give up a really strong talent like that just to make globes sort of relevant. So let's move on to energized cord. Uh, increases the energy stored from Ariel's basic attacks to 100% of the damage against heroes and 30% of the damage against non-heroes does not affect your Bestow Hope ally. So this one basically rewards you for uh, spamming attacks. Uh, let's see. So you build your energy pretty fast. I'm not going to lie. It does not take long. Let's test... Um, how fast you can get back in between four second casts. Looks like it gets about 500 basically in between just auto attacking with that talent. Now that actually doesn't seem bad, but I still don't, I don't feel like you're going to be energy starved. With, an, with enough cues, with a teammate that's really rocking with your bestow hope. I don't know, I, I don't think you're going to need energy management so much. But then again, Bursting Light, I mean, this has the opposite problem, right? This could, this makes it difficult to keep up with energy uh, because you're healing too much. This one gives you probably an abundance of energy, so there are potential downsides to both. But I just love the idea of being able to spam two heals uh, so quickly, a two second cooldown like that. Because there will be instances where you might want to burst heal. And that basically gives you a, a burst. still feels better, uh, but I could see some usage here for Energized Cord if it turns out that that uh, gathering energy is more challenging than uh, I'm assuming based on my understanding here. Which, you know, it, it certainly the, it could be the case, because I haven't played Aura on the game yet. This is literally the first I've seen of her. So uh, she might actually end up being energy starved, in which case a talent like this makes a lot of sense. There's also Empathic Link. Oriel stores 25% of damage taken by allies with Bestow Hope. Ah, so this flips it, right? Uh, this normally awards you energy when they deal damage. Empathic Link, uh, she becomes empathetic to them. 
And when they take damage, she now gets energy as well. So this could be good on someone like a tank, who absorbs a lot of hits and uh, gives you energy. So I kind of like the idea of this, right? It's almost like an infinite heal generator. They're taking damage, you're healing it. They're taking damage, you're healing it. They're taking damage, you're healing it. Even if they're not putting out a lot of healing, you can still probably keep up to some extent. Uh, but I still think I actually like Bursting Light better as the talent at this tier, although Energized Core does make some sense, and even Empathic Link makes sense, right? Because this is more of a defensive ability. Maybe if your team's behind, for instance, or you don't have, like, a star damage dealer, I could see this one being a, a kind of a specific pick in those instances. So let's move on to uh, Ariel's heroic abilities. I don't think we'll be able to see Resurrect in action because it's really hard to kill an ally in try mode. Uh, but this channels on the spirit of a dead ally for three seconds, bringing them back to life with 50% of their maximum health at the location where they died. So this is the first Resurrect ability we've seen. And it kind of seems a little overpowered at some point. In some cases, right? Just because we've never seen that before. Stuff like um, Leoric, you know, pseudo fast resurrect is a very powerful effect. So it, it seems like being able to resurrect an ally on command could be quite good. But I worry that uh, this is a channeled effect, right? So it's not like something that's going to be easy to pull off right in the middle of combat. I don't even know if we can see the. Oh, the range is super short, too. This is the range for resurrect, right? So. You know, you're not going to be like stand off and hide and resurrect somebody. You're going to have to stand there and take hits and it's going to get canceled. And uh, it's just not going to be easy to pull off in combat. So this is kind of a less of a, a combat res and more of a uh, disaster mitigation res. So if somebody like gets ganked, you can come res them. Uh, if, if somebody gets picked off and you disengage, you can res them without losing a lot of time. You might be able to res one teammate after a wipe to like save a keep. It's that kind of thing. So, it's, I, I don't know that it's good. I just don't know that it's going to make an impact on the game in the moments that matter most. It's, it's kind of a lose less talent, not a uh, compete more talent. <laughs> it's certainly not a win more talent, um, but it, it, it's a, a seemingly lose less talent that doesn't make a strong impact in my mind. Uh, I think we'll still see people pick it, but I'm not actually sure it's going to be the best choice. Uh, there's also Crystal Aegis as an alternative, and I have a feeling I'm going to like this one a little better. has a much shorter cooldown at 60 seconds versus 90 seconds. Uh, this places an allied hero into stasis for 2 seconds, and upon expiration, Crystal Aegis uh, deals almost 600 damage to nearby allies. So let's go ahead and see this. Pretty big AoE on this. Uh, I, I think I like this, right? Like, Ice Block effects are pretty powerful. If you see somebody about to get hit by Precision Strike, uh, you can save them with Crystal Aegis. And any enemies that linger are going to take a pretty big hit to the face, right? Like, not a huge hit. It's 600 damage. It's not going to ruin anybody's day, but it could kill lingering health enemies who are in a duel or uh, just, you know, hit three or four people on an objective. There are all kinds of ways to use this. And it, it seems to me like a much better choice than Resurrect, because this one's going to matter... In the big moments, in a big fight, this could make a huge play, right? It's it's almost like Uther's Divine Shield in a, in, an, in, a, in a sense. It's not because they lose the ability to attack and do stuff. So it's not quite as aggressive as Uther's Divine Shield. But similar stasis effect, it makes them invulnerable to damage. Uh, and it actually does do some damage as well, so it's got a little bit more correlation to Uther's um, divine shields because it's not totally taking them out of commission they, they won't be able to do anything themselves but they're still making an impact on the area around them thanks to your damage so i, I think it's good uh it it feels like the kind of burst shields heals ultimate save ability that oriel doesn't have she doesn't have like an instant shield or a get out of jail free card with her main heal so this kind of gives her that like save an ally in a desperate moment uh, and it just feels like the better talent. I think it's going to be more consistent than Resurrect, and it's going to matter more uh, during actual fights. So let's move on to level 13 uh, with Blinding Flash. Enemies hit by the center area of Sacred Sweep are blinded for four seconds. 
Okay, blinds are really good, especially against certain team compositions. So you could definitely take this against uh, melee heavy teams. But do keep in mind that this is not really any better than Lily's Blinding Winds, which is one of her basic abilities. In fact, it's probably worse because it's going to be a little bit harder to hit. But the duration is, I think, the same as Blinding Winds. So uh, if you like Lily's Blinds, as you should, you might like this as well. There's also Converging Force, enemies hit by the outer area are pushed slightly towards the center. Well, that has been a powerful effect before, like Li Ming's uh, S of Johan, I believe it was called, uh, used to cause a lot of problems with that. Uh, oh, we gotta, we gotta pick the talent first. And uh, of course, Johanna has a pretty cool, pretty cool effect with that as well. Uh, but I, I don't really know, I guess you could sync it up with, with uh, you know, allied teammates, but they're gonna have to know it's coming, and there's not like enough animation lead up time to like adjust skill shots based on how it pulls them in. My real question is, does it do? If it pulls somebody in, does it apply the the outside damage or the inside damage to them? That's really the important question, and, and I don't know if we'll determine the answer here, but that could make a big difference on whether or not uh, the ability is good. But, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be terrible, necessarily. I do think I prefer the blind over Converging Force, though. There's also Piercing Lash. Uh, Detainment Strike now pierces and hits all enemies in a line. Well, okay, that's kind of cool, but I don't know how often you're going to be able to hit two people. Uh, that seems like it might have some consistency issues. Plus, you know, it is your longest cooldown ability, so that talent is going to uh, make less of an impact. Uh, or at least less regular of an impact versus talents on other abilities with shorter cooldowns. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, you're only going to get the benefit of this talent every 14 seconds and only in situations that are extremely specific where uh, enemy the enemy team has lined up. But you know, sometimes it's going to be very difficult to find, find those angles. So I don't think I love Piercing Lash, even though, you know, it does seem kind of overpowered if you do hit multiple people and you stun them. That's you know, an AOE stun, essentially, which is ridiculous. Um, but again, inconsistent, I believe. There's also Repelling Strike. Enemies hit by Detainment Strike are knocked back 35% farther. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's not bad. Uh, let me... It's going to be hard to determine the knockback, because this stupid target dummy has gotten himself... Uh, He's got himself pinned against the wall here, and I, I can't seem to get him off. He seems to be clipping the wall no matter what angle I approach from. So uh, we may have to test here on Arthas if we can. Um, uh, we actually need to buy the talent, though. So he, how far did he go back now? Um, enough to hit the wall, but that doesn't really tell us much. Let's go over here. Um, so, you know, about that distance right there. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and grab the... The talent here and see if we can't see how much farther it looks oh geez that actually seemed like way more than 35 percent we're knocking him out of vision <laughs> i don't know that's gonna make it way easier to hit people into walls that seemed really far uh i don't know that's not bad maybe it's way farther than it seemed with 35 percent right like geez look at that he flew from like here to that wall uh, that might actually make this a lot better, because hitting the stun is going to be a, a key component. Whoa! That's so much better than I anticipated. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, I'm kind of getting teased by this now. I mean, I think you still probably want to take the blind uh, against really melee heavy teams, but Repelling Strike seems kind of good. I don't know. I like it. So let's move on to level 16. Uh, there's Reservoir of Hope. Each maximum energy ray of heaven that Oriole casts increases the maximum amount of energy that can be stored by 75. So every time you cast a full full health one that, yeah, we just went to 1227 and cooldowns being toggled is going to make this super duper easy. Um... We're up to 1,600. Uh, that's sort of ridiculous. 
But there, there is a problem, right, in, in practice. It's very easy in try mode because we have unlimited energy, but um, there are a couple problems, right? It, it becomes much harder to proc this effect every time that you proc the effect because you have to build back up more and more energy each subsequent, each subsequent time. So that's the first challenge. Um, the second challenge is, in many ways, this could actually make... It could make... Uh, your healing mechanics a little bit more challenging just because when you're at 1100 right you can start healing people at 11 as soon as they take 1100 health you can cast your heal and start rebuilding energy reserves uh, when it's at say 1750 you have to wait until someone has taken approximately 1750 um, damage to start rebuilding your energy reserves essentially kind of Lengthening your cooldown if you want to maximize the efficiency of your first initial burst heal, because uh, you know you're, it's going to take you longer to rebuild energy because you're waiting longer to cast it. So you're going to be at max energy for longer at the start of a fight. So it kind of makes that first ability rotation of your W a little bit more awkward and a little bit delayed. Which you know, I, I, would you rather have two? 1100 point heals within eight seconds at the beginning of a fight or would you rather have one 1750 heal say uh you know 10 seconds into the well, let's just say let's say seven seconds into the fight right assume it takes another three seconds to take that damage and then another four seconds so take 11 seconds to heal 2600 damage so would you rather have 2200 damage in eight seconds or 2600 damage in 11 seconds. That's the kind of math that might have sounded confusing, but hopefully you understand what I'm suggesting here is that, um, in other words, you, you might overheal more easily when you're at 1800, 1900. Uh, so you kind of wasted that energy you built up to the max, and you're trying to build it to the max in order to get another stack. So there's, I don't know if I'd call it diminishing returns, but sort of awkward returns, and, and sort of just diminishing returns because it's harder and harder to make this quest work. But I don't know, in a, in a high-powered team with a lot of energy being built, it's kind of crazy, right? Because you could basically just get a huge heal. Like right now, we're going to heal for 2350, which is just absurd, right? And again, this is super easy in try mode. I guess you can just, like, max this, right? How far does this go? It doesn't have a cap. So we can just heal for, for 3172. <laughs> in a long game, this sure could be nuts. Uh, it's also probably good if you get energy generation talents that are easier to fill up your energy bar. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, oh my god, if you get the damage! How much damage is this doing right now? It's hitting for a thousand! We're shredding minions! <laughs> Again, I don't think you're going to get this high. So this is probably a little bit of a, you know, a false... Uh, but still, we're, we're healing for 4,000 and dealing, you know, um, 1,300 damage basically with every hit. So that's sort of ridiculous. I, that's a fun talent. I don't know if it's good, though. I, I'm really not sure it's good. So let's see what else is on 16. There's also Will of Heaven. Allies with Bestow Hope gain 20% attack speed. That actually just seems really good, just like a nice passive benefit. Because um, not only is you're increasing someone's damage, and particularly the, the damage of someone that you really like on your team that you know is good and a key target, but also you're increasing your healing, right? Because the more damage they do, the more energy you generate, the more healing you do. So that's a kind of a cool ability, uh, particularly on a strong auto attacker. There's also Wrath of Heaven. Uh, allies with be Bestow Hope gain 10% ability power. Okay, so same, same principle here. Uh, this is for mages, spellcasters, this is for auto attackers, but the same principle, and I'm sure that Blizzard has, has tried to tune these numbers to make sense together, so I'm sure they have a pretty similar impact. So I, I think there's going to be some people who take Reservoir of Hope or are super greedy <laughs> and want to do cool stuff <laughs> and ridiculous things eventually, and I think the rest of us will take uh, Will of Heaven and Wrath of Heaven because these provide uh, more consistent results and perhaps uh, reduce some awkwardness in casting your uh, your W. So let's move on finally to level 20. Uh, up first is light speed. Increases the healing of resurrect to 100%. Remember it's normally 50%. 
Uh, and people resurrected also gain 200% increased movement speed. Well, that's really fast. <laughs> I, I don't know what the purpose is, though. Wh why are they needing movement speed? I actually don't understand why it's relevant that they have movement speed. Um, if somebody dies in lane and you go to, to heal, to res them after a gank, they're not moving anywhere, they're in their lane. I guess if they die in a fight and you somehow manage to get a resurrect off, it could allow them to escape uh, or, or chase down an enemy. Like if you've, if, if they've lost a duel and the opponent has decided to flee because you've arrived to finish them off, you could resurrect and they could chase them down. That just feels really awkward though and I don't really see the utility there. Uh, I, I don't really love resurrect yet and I especially don't like light speed as a buff to resurrect. Uh, there's also a diamond resolve. When Crystal Aegis expires, it grants a shield that reduces damage by 50% for 4 seconds. That sounds awesome. Because remember, you're going to be casting this on the person that's like probably about to die that's super susceptible, including yourself. And uh, this also gives you a super sick shield at the end. Uh, so when you pop out of there, people are going to try to kill you and you're going to be... Oh, that's even cool looking. You're still going to be super tough to kill. So... Uh, it seems like a strong ultimate and a strong heroic and a strong upgrade for it as well. I like that a lot. Uh, it, it's sort of a, uh, a a targeted immunity, and then a uh, I'm blanking on the name, but the tank talent that reduces damage taken for four seconds. So it, it's a targeted version of that. There's also uh, angelic flight, 45 second cooldown. Activate to fly to a chosen location. Uh, that's actually pretty cool. I want to see that in action, of course. Uh, so this becomes an active talent. Uh, it seems to have a global cast range, at least from the... Oh, boy. This might be a regret. <laughs> so yeah, so definitely a global, uh, global cast range, at least as far as we can tell. Very close to global. May have a limitation, much like false ads, right? But um, probably not too, too problematic. Uh, so just gives you some global presence, right? Just like uh, False Ad, Brightwing, uh, Dahaka, etc. It's, it's well known that that's a very powerful thing to have. So I'm sure there will be people, particularly probably in like competitive environments, who really like this. But I will say that one of the advantages of those global presences is that it allows you to soak lanes really effectively in the early to mid game. You can go cover a lane, you can hang out right before an objective, teleport into the objective or fly right into the objective after soaking an extra wave or two, uh, which becomes less relevant post-level 20 when this opens up. So I don't know that uh, that this is going to be as powerful as some of those default global traits that uh, other heroes have. So I don't think this will be better than Diamond Resolve. But what else is here? There's also Shield of Hope. Activate to grant an all nearby allied heroes with a shield for three seconds equal to 50% of the amount of health that they are missing. Okay, so it's sort of like Storm Shield, but um, way different. It's uh, a three second shield. Not the longest shield ever, but reasonable. Um, it's all nearby heroes. Let's go ahead and see the range on this, right? Uh, so pretty big circle, just what you'd expect. And it equals 50% of the amount of health that they are missing. So let's go ahead and try to miss some health, right? Let's see if we can't lose some health. So basically, you know, we're at 4,000 health here, so let's assume we're at 10% of our health, right? Now, we've got uh, 400 health left, which means we're missing 3,800 health. That means if we get half of our health back, it's going to be a 1,900 health shield. In fact, that one was 1,827. Uh, that's a pretty big shield. <laughs> that's a that's a solid size shield, right? Um, I, I like this a lot. It's got a short enough cooldown that it will happen in most fights. And it's basically like when everybody's almost dead... In that last moment, when they're out of hope, you can give them the shield of hope. And uh, it, it basically does a couple things, right? Uh, it, it just makes them stay alive for an extra three seconds, which is 
you know, Ray of Heaven's cooldown is four seconds. So they get to pump out more damage, you get to pump out more damage, and it buys you time to cast an extra heal, which, you know, if you hit multiple people, it's another two, 3,000 health uh, from your heal. So it, it's just buying you time to get a heal out, and of course buying your allies time to just win the fight and kill the opponent. So it really does reward aggressive play and, and low health, and I mean, it's kind of good, but Diamond Resolve also feels strong. I don't know, I, I like both of these talents, and there's probably even a world where Angelic Flight is also good. So uh, it, it's hard to say. I guess if you have like one super go-at-it hero like an Illidan who's just diving into the enemy team and going crazy with your Bestow Hope, uh, something like uh, Crystal Aegis and Diamond Resolve could make a lot of sense. Just because you're putting so much into that one hero. But if you have a more balanced team, you got like mages or squishies or, you know, just... You're, you're fighting pretty evenly in team fights. I think Shield of Hope could give you the edge that you need to, to pull ahead late in those fights. And uh, swing them in your favor. So, I like both talents. Both are good. And uh, that's going to do it for Ariel's talents. Not bad. I, I think she has a pretty cool uh, talent kit here. A lot of tough decisions. A lot of stuff feels strong. It seems good. Uh, a couple different ways to go. You can kind of focus on your Q. You can focus on damage output. You can focus on energy generation. Uh, you can kind of go with like a buff build in many ways, helping out your teammates. Uh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how she shapes up, but it feels like... Depending upon the enemy team composition, your allies' composition, so who's on your team, uh, you're going to have to be pretty flexible with these talents and even in the way you play and who you heal and how you manage your energy. There's a lot to balance. I do think that uh, that Ariel's abilities are fairly easy to use as far as like casting them and, and hitting them, like the skill shot aspect. But I think given her energy management resource game, it's like a mini game of sorts, and knowing when to heal and how to heal and how much energy to heal and casting a 200 health heal instead of an 1100 point heal and all that different stuff uh, actually is going to make her a moderately high skill cap healer. But I will say it does seem like she's going to be the most fun support in the game <laughs> just because there's going to be a lot of action and uh, she does seemingly okay damage for a support and in fact is encouraged to do damage which is nice as well. And uh, she's still ranged, so she doesn't have to like get right up in the action, but uh, can if she if she wants probably, because you know if you're next to melees and you heal, you're going to be more likely to get more heals out. And her health pool's not that squishy, so uh, she can she's got enough to work with too. But just a high octane, high impact healer that's not probably going to be resource limited. You're not running out of mana. There's always more mana to be found using your damage. So that's pretty fun. I, I think she's going to be cool. I think she'll be particularly good in uh, melee compositions, probably. People that have good sustained damage to keep her energy uh, flowing consistently. Because the problem with someone like a mage, right? Uh, with like Jaina doing damage for you. She has three big bursts of damage and you get one big heal, but then she's out of gas. And you don't get her benefit from Bestow Hope. But somebody like a Rainer doing damage... Uh, it's, it's more consistent and it's predictable, so you can control how much energy you're using, can get additional energy in a more predictable fashion. So I think she'll be probably easier to play and better in those uh, melee sustain style compositions. Plus, she's just really good at sustaining because she does have essentially unlimited mana and a really short cooldown heal. So I don't think she's going to be as strong in burst or dive compositions. I think you're really going to enjoy Oriole when fights last a little longer. And she has time to really take advantage of her super strong sustain. So that's my thoughts on the sort of compositional strategy behind Oriole. But again, this is the first time I've seen the hero. Haven't played any games with her yet. I have no idea, honestly, how she's going to play or what talents are great yet. It's going to take some, uh, some practice and some games and uh, some time seeing her in action to really get a feel for what she can do. All that said, I love playing support. She's a really cool, a cool designed... Uh, both visually and uh, play style hero so i'm looking forward to, to taking her out into the nexus and killing some people with some uh some sacred sweeps and healing some dudes with some rays from heaven 
that'll do it for me and my first impressions of Oriole. If you have any questions about this hero or my thoughts on talents, please do leave them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, game on.